The exact borders of the region of Central Asia are a bit debatable, but almost always include the Turkic republics of the former Soviet Union, minus Azerbaijan, that being Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. That's a lot of stands, I do realize, and it's extremely easy for people to get these countries mixed up, and although they do have many things in common, they all have unique histories and people. Using this definition, Central Asia would have a population of around 70 million people, more than that of France, yet would have an area of over 1.5 million square miles, being somewhere in the range of India or Australia. Some places that are sometimes considered to be a part of Central Asia would be the country of Afghanistan, yet another Stan country, and the province of China, known as Xinjiang. And wait, don't be disappointed, because the province is also known as East Turkestan. Being directly south of this region are the countries of Pakistan and Iranistan, I mean, Iran. The people of Central Asia have many diverse roots, however, the largest group of humans in the region would be the Turkic peoples. The Turkic peoples of Central Asia are actually distinct from the Middle Eastern Turkic peoples, such as Turks, Azeris, and Iraqi and Syrian Turkmen, since the Central Asian Turks have been heavily influenced by the surrounding peoples and cultures, as well as that of the former indigenous inhabitants of the region before the Turkic migration. Here's a map that many of you might recognize as that of the Indo-European languages, stretching from the European languages in Europe and Russia to the Indo-Iranian languages of Iran and South Asia. However, you might be wondering what's up with the gap between the European and Indo-Iranian subfamilies. Well, these regions of Anatolia and Central Asia actually used to belong to separate branches of the Indo-European language family, with the languages of Central Asia being more closely related to that of the Iranian languages. The original inhabitants of Central Asia thousands of years ago were, in appearance, probably somewhere in between that of the Slavic Europeans and Iranian peoples. The modern Central Asian people today were formed when the invading Mongol Empire swept through Central Asia utterly annihilating the original people groups, but rather than the Central Asians being created through rape by Mongol men, it's much more likely that the survivors of this onslaught mixed with the advancing North Asian Turkic peoples who moved in to fill the gap left by the Mongol army. Many scholars believe that the original Turkic peoples were related to the Mongols and probably had a common origin known as the Altaic theory. However, no unanimous conclusion has been reached among anthropologists or linguists. All of the Central Asian Turkic ethnic groups, that being the Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, Turkmen, Uzbeks, and Uyghurs, yeah, I know it looks like Ughur, but it's pronounced Uyghur, well, they're all an amalgamation of Northeast Asian groups, as well as groups of European and Middle Eastern origin. The exact admixture for each group varies, with Kazakhs having more Slavic European DNA, Kyrgyz having much more East Asian DNA, and the Turkmen having far more Middle Eastern Iranian DNA than the others. As with nearly every other group of mixed origin, the Turkic peoples do not have a uniform appearance, with many Central Asians looking perhaps Chinese or Mongolian in appearance, while others have very European features such as blue eyes or blonde hair. However, the majority clearly have a combination of features from European, East Asian, and Middle Eastern groups. Interestingly enough, judging by language, it would appear that Turkmen is most closely related to the Turkish and Azeri languages of the Middle East, Uzbek is most closely related to Uyghur in China, additionally Kazakh and Kyrgyz are very closely related, with many speakers of the different languages being able to understand each other. Every single Turkic group in Central Asia is overwhelmingly Muslim besides the Altai people from the Altai Republic of the Russian Federation, although it's debatable as to whether or not this is a part of Central Asia. One of the more complicated groups in Central Asia are the various Persian-speaking groups of Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and bleeding over into Iran. Most linguists agree that the various forms of Persian spoken in these three countries are all dialects of the same language, the only difference being Farsi and Dari spoken in Iran and Afghanistan respectively are written in the Arabic script, and Tajik, spoken in Tajikistan and Northeast Afghanistan, is generally written in the Cyrillic script because of its position in the former Soviet Union. According to the official government census, there are only around 1.5 million ethnic Tajiks living in the country of Uzbekistan, or about 5% of the population. 
However, independent sources sometimes place the number of Tajiks as high as one-third of the total population, or over 12 million Tajiks, more than that of the entire country of Tajikistan itself. This is, however, a highly unlikely claim, and the real number is probably somewhere in the middle. In Afghanistan, besides the Persian-speaking ethnic groups, the largest group would be the Pashtuns, an Iranian ethnic group related to Persians, also known as Pathans, and sometimes the word Afghan is used to refer to only people of the Pashtun ethnicity. Pashtuns also occupy the northwest corner of Pakistan and have a large influence in the government there. In central Afghanistan, the people speak the Dari dialect of Persian, yet are a very distinct ethnicity known as the Hazara people, who in appearance greatly resemble the Central Asian Turkic peoples, although they are probably a mix of Mongol invaders as well as the pre-Mongol Iranian population. Maybe most interestingly of all, there's a very small ethnic group in Afghanistan known as the Moghal people, who number less than 100,000 people, that are the closest you're going to see to an unmixed population of Mongol descent in Central Asia. There are also around 100,000 people known as Dungan, who are of Han Chinese descent, but whose ancestors converted to Islam and migrated to various Central Asian countries some time ago. They're very similar but distinct to the Hui people of China, who are considerably more numerous at around 10 million people, and are considered a separate ethnic group. The Dungans have slightly higher levels of European and Middle Eastern admixture at around 5 to 10 percent. Most of northern Kazakhstan is actually still majority Russian and Orthodox Christian, as well as containing many other Slavic and European groups. Due to its proximity to the Russian homeland, ethnic Russians have been settling in this region for hundreds of years, reaching a peak in the mid-1900s where 42.8 percent of the entire Kazakh Republic was of Russian descent, outnumbering even the native Kazakhs themselves. For the most part, there were large minorities of Russians in all of the Soviet Central Asian republics, especially Kyrgyzstan. However, since the collapse of the Soviet Union nearly 30 years ago, the number and percentage of ethnic Russians in this area has been plummeting fast, with many migrating back to the plains of Russia, with the government supplies them with certain incentives to repopulate their quickly shrinking population. Because of some of the screwy policies of forced migration enacted by Joseph Stalin and other Soviet dictators, the modern Central Asian post-Soviet republics have many people groups that you might not have thought to be there. For instance, Uzbekistan has one of the largest numbers of Koreans outside of the Korean Peninsula in the world at around 200,000 people of what are known as Koryo Saram, that being the former inhabitants of the far eastern Siberian island of Sakhalin, that were deported to Central Asia after the southern half of the island was annexed by the Soviet Union from Japan after World War II. There are also fairly large numbers of Germans, Ukrainians, and Polish people in these Central Asian countries, either by various cases of forced or natural migration, although the majority of these communities have been repatriated back to their countries of origin. The Uyghurs of Western China are the largest Turkic group that does not yet have an independent state. Many Uyghur people in the province of Xinjiang have decided to ally themselves with radical Islamist groups in a desperate attempt to gain independence from the Chinese government. In reality, it's highly unlikely that the PRC government would ever willingly grant the region independence, and similarly to the region of Tibet, the PRC has attempted to artificially change the ethnic makeup of the province by making sure there's a large number of Han Chinese citizens there, and currently only around 45% of the province is Uyghur, 40% Han Chinese, with the remaining 15% being Kazakhs and others. Central Asia is truly one of the more peculiar regions of the world, being an amalgamation of many of the surrounding peoples and cultures, as well as that of the original groups that inhabited the region. It's one of the first instances of a major genetic shift in a human population for a certain geographic region. Believe it or not, these countries were actually one of my first geographic obsessions when I started studying geography and demography when I was in ninth grade. I just thought it was so weird and crazy that there were so many countries out there with the ending Stan right next to each other, and it's one of the reasons I became so interested in geography and people, but I'll elaborate on that in the future Q&A, which, by the way, I've decided to postpone to 10,000 subscribers instead of 1,000. And good news, because of the recent support from my Patreon supporters, I've been able to quit one of my jobs 
and will really be hustling with the videos so I can get to all of your requests. So huge thanks to my Patreon supporters out there. So new videos coming soon. And uh, let me know your thoughts on Central Asia and the Central Asian people down in the comments below. And no, I'm not Central Asian. I know a lot of people ask me if I'm like half Asian or something. I talk about what race I am in the previous video. So you should see that if you want to see what exact ethnic makeup I am. And as always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.